right, guys. It is a spectacularly gorgeous, over-the-top beautiful Monday morning here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here on Monday morning, well, July 5th of yesterday was the 4th of July, July 5th, 2021, and, uh, well, I still have a long sleeve t-shirt, flannel pajamas, and sheepskin boots on on this nice, cool, crisp morning, but I guess we're heading to 87 here, uh, so I need to get out there and enjoy the cool of the morning to finish up my gravel pile and my corn hoeing while I still can. And uh, before I do bring you today's chronicle of the collapse, Good Lord, guys, I could go through the mainstream media today and uh, come up with 20 different rants, but we're going, man, how do I, uh, how many rants have I brought to Chronicles have I brought from Umer Haik, I guess you pronounce this man's name, H-A-Q-U-E. I want to thank alert listener Lieutenant Aaron in Florida for sending me this. I'm sure this <coughs> will be read all over the Doomosphere today. And uh, <coughs> I'm going to put the link on here. And you can read this yourself because... For once, I, I don't have a whole lot to add. You know, I usually break up people's uh, essays to uh, <clears throat> help you read it. But Umer pretty much nails it here. So take it away. Umer Hake, if that's how I pronounce your name, <clears throat> from his 4th of July uh, expose. This is why we should stop calling it climate change. The words climate change may end up being the biggest lie ever told. And uh, this is the picture of the planet on the 4th of July. I noticed New York State, I guess, is a little oasis of freedom uh, in the middle of this which is why I live here. All right, take it away, Umer, and tell us why we should stop calling it climate change. <clears throat> By now, you might have heard... Now, 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 Umer, you really should be able to make it through the fourth word of your essay without a grammatical error. Uh, in case you're listening to this, to Umer, we love you, brother, but you're a little bit sloppy. I don't know if this is you. I don't know if this is your secretary or who, but you really need to do more proofreading uh, on your essays so you can make it to uh, four words into it without a grammatical error. Now, I am just going to try to clean up Umer's bad grammar, which is not bad grammar, it's typos. But anyway, all right, we're going to start over. I just had to get that little Virgo journalist copy editor <coughs> comment out of the way. Once again, take two. <coughs> By now, you might have heard the shocking, gruesome fact that 300 people are dead in Canada from the heat. There's a heat dome stretching over the Pacific Northwest that's made it nearly as hot as the hottest place on Earth. Jacobod Pakistan claims that title with average temperatures of 50 degrees C. Portland, Oregon hit 46 degrees C. What is that, around 110 or 115? This is the brutal startling reality of climate change, of, wait, what? Climate change? The climate is not changing, it is heating. 
rapidly, faster than at any point in hundreds of millions of years. It is heating so fast that this is the stuff entire geotemporal boundaries are made of, ages in geological history, so fast that it is shattering scientists' worst predictions and making reality look like a sci-fi movie where scores of people die off in Canada because of sweltering heat. It is not change of some symmetrical, anodyne, innocuous kind. The planet isn't getting cooler. It is rapid, sudden, potentially runaway. And, and Umer knows as well as I do. It's nothing potential about it. It's rapid, sudden, runaway, already lethal, discontinuous transformation in one direction. It is getting hotter fast. We should stop calling it climate change. Now, before you object, bear with me and let's investigate the history of the term. We used to call it global warming not so long ago. The big we, as in all of us, because that is what the norm was. That is the term which dominated public discourse, and you'd read it in papers and books and articles, not the seemingly anodyne climate change. That was a far, far, meaning global warming, was a far, far more accurate term, and that was the problem and who it, well, as you know, as you're reading this, keep in mind because he doesn't point this out, you will hear on all of these climate change denial sites, everyone from Alex Jones to everyone claiming that it was climatologists who coined the word climate change. It was the climatologists themselves who, who softened the term global warming into climate change. This is what all of these right-wing Republican head up there, you know what, uh, climate change deniers will tell you that it was these, uh, these alarmist climatologists probably on the left uh, making the change, but Umer is ready to disabuse the clueless morons of that notion, of that myth about where the term climate change came from. So where did it come from, <coughs> Umer? <coughs> Here's a little factoid for you. Do you know who invented the term climate change? Frank Luntz, the Republican strategist. Why? Because the term global warming was dangerous. Because it was true. Too frightening. Too true. Too real. Too self-explanatory powerful and strong. It had to be Orwellianized. It had to be memory hold. Doublespeak had to be crafted to create the impression that there was some debate on this topic. Debate like what? Debate like Maybe the planet wasn't just warming. Maybe the temperature and climate were just changing naturally, not as a result of human influence, not as a result of unbridled production, consumption, and pollution, and of course, unbridled breeding. Of course, Umer, I don't know how many kids Umer has. Would someone please look that up? Uh, Umer obviously does not talk about, that makes no connection between overpopulation and global warming. Uh, 
So we will have to put the human influence of breeding at the top of the list, although Umer is completely unaware of the connection. Anyway, <clears throat> I said I would not interrupt Umer, and once again I lied. All right, <clears throat> maybe this, meaning global warming, was just something that happened according to the planet's natural cycles and rhythms. Maybe, maybe, maybe doubt had to be manufactured. That is why Luntz invented the term climate change. <clears throat> Luntz rebranded global warming as climate change because it sounds far, far less dangerous, problematic, severe, worrisome. The usual network of right-wing think tanks, you know, which now blame those lefty, politically motivated uh, climatologists themselves for changing, the, you know, those right-wing think tanks like the Heartland Institute, meaning being the, the leader of the pack uh, of those uh, idiots. Uh, the usual network of right-wing think tanks and media outlets, of course, you have to lump them in here, immediately as if by design, because that is exactly what it was, by design began to use it. And the rest is history. By now, all of us use a term that a Republican strategist came up with to make global warming sound less dangerous and wonder why we can't fix the planet. There you are, probably, like a dummy, still using it. You are using terms designed by a Republican strategist who wanted to deny the truth of global warming to refer to it. What does that make you? A sucker, a mark, a rube you have fallen for a branding campaign, one designed to pull the wool over eyes about, oh, only the most urgent issue on earth on which your life and prosperity very much depend too. Just ask the people in Canada who died of the heat. Oh, wait, you can't ask them because they're dead. <clears throat> Sorry to be harsh, but I feel we have to speak honestly about such matters because, of course, unless you are book hermit living in the Pacific Northwest, <clears throat> there is no doubt about what is happening to the planet. It is not cooling, it's warming. It's not natural, it is profoundly unnatural, as in human-made, and even at that, made by a certain lifestyle of rampant overconsumption, sprawl, greed, and materialism. What does that make Luntz, by the way? Well, it's not too hard to see that Luntz's idea of rebranding global warming as climate change worked. Welcome to the Orwellian world of 1984. <clears throat> For decades, nobody much cared. Lutz's rebranding took place in the early 2000s when the window, that famous window of opportunity to stop the planet Hitting severe warming was closing, and thank you, Umer Haik, the window did close. All right, we can stop this crap about the window of opportunity rapidly closing. The window of opportunity to fix this planet has slammed 
shut. It has been nailed, screwed shut. The window of opportunity to save the planet will never be opened again. Well, in about 10 million years, maybe it will be. But anyway, I'm uh, getting off on my window of opportunity. Talk about a term that needs to be eradicated right along with uh, climate change is this window of opportunity crap. If I hear that blankety blank cliche one more time, anyway, and the window did close. Now, two degrees C of warming is more or less locked in. We're only at about one so far, and we have got killer heat domes in Canada. Want to venture a guess about what happens as the temperature goes on rising? <clears throat> Luntz's campaign worked brilliantly. Elites around the planet began using this new term, climate change, to sound smart. To please America, the most powerful nation on earth, to align their interests with it, and as elites change their language, their attitudes and sentiments changed too. No longer was anyone interested in really stopping runaway global warming. Why did such a thing even exist? It was Orwell's great lesson writ large. <clears throat> if you can disappear a thing in language, you can make people stop thinking, thinking it, and it simply vanishes. The point of Orwellian doublespeak is to veil the truth with doubt to filigree it with the shadow of complacency to make the lie seem real. And the truth is that thanks to Lentz, the GOP, the American media, and elites around the world following their lead, the dire threat of global warming soon enough became the anodyne-sounding climate change. And who really worries about that? It makes you think you might be sitting on a tropical beach sipping a Mai Tai, not boiled alive by a killer heat dome. <clears throat> All the urgency and danger and severity went out of the issue and the world simply dilly-dallied as if there was plenty of time to waste about a problem that probably wasn't even going to be much of a problem. Just ask Book Hermit in Seattle. What did Book Hermit say in a comment last week? Just relax and pretend like you're in Las Vegas. <clears throat> and we are still using the vocabulary of global warming deniers to describe all this climate change. <clears throat> we have been made fools of in such a deep and lasting way. It has taken away our power using the Orwellian language which was chosen for us to fight the biggest and most urgent problem human civilization has ever faced. So, if using the term climate change <clears throat> make us apathetic, spineless, useful idiots to elites who would happily watch the world literally burn, what does that make Frank Lutz? Well, Luntz will, or perhaps should, probably go down as one of history's great monsters. 300 people in Canada <coughs> are already dead. <coughs> Climate change is going to claim tens, probably hundreds of millions of lives as nations burn, cities sink, 
societies go up like tinder boxes and the desperate and impoverished try to flee it all <clears throat> and take a guess where they're going to flee it all to. <clears throat> Nobody can really say how much of that death and despair can be ascribed to Luntz alone, but would you like to have played a hand in hundreds of millions of deaths? <clears throat> Maybe that's why Luntz himself is now apologetic about his malign Orwellian creation. <clears throat> of course, apologies are not nearly enough. It's like watching an abuser hit you and say, sorry. <clears throat> Redress means a whole lot more and it starts the true process of reparations. Lutz, I don't think history will ever forgive him and that's okay. He doesn't seem like the kind of guy who cares. <clears throat> But you should, you should care intensely about all of this because, like I said, you have been made a fool of. You are using the language global warming deniers invented to try futilely to describe what is happening to a dying planet. <clears throat> of course, it doesn't work very well because they invented the very term climate change to stop any reality from entering the discussion, minds, societies, and public spheres. Their goal was to kill the truth and they succeeded. <clears throat> climate change might well prove the biggest lie ever told. <clears throat> so you should stop telling it too. It is not climate change. It never was. It is global warming or global heating if you like, but that sounds a little silly and we should all reclaim the term. Yes, it sounds dire, that's because it contains power, resonance, urgency, forces a confrontation with reality. <clears throat> it has deep, serious, profound meaning. Yes, it is frightening. It should be because it is true. Amen, Brother Umer Haik, or however you pronounce your name. Uh, anyway, I actually liked him uh, talking about <clears throat> admitting that the window of opportunity to save a dying planet slammed shut uh, about 20 years ago, even more than uh, the rest of the rest of the rant. Someday we will get Umer to write an essay about overpopulation, but if he's a breeder, uh, probably never. That is the one uh, third rail subject that Umer Hake, like everybody else on every end of the political spectrum, will not touch. <clears throat> yeah. Anyway, little dog, the globe is starting to heat outside and I'm looking at a gravel pile and a pile of wood chips and a cornfield that needs hoeing. So we're going to get out while there's still some morning chill and get out there and shovel gravel and wood chips while we still can and I highly advise you to do the same on this gorgeous Monday morning. Bye guys. Okay, you can get back out to getting chippies and whatever you do with your day.